Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Vanchana Singh, Assistant Professor from Indraprastha Engineering College. Now we are going to talk about what are transistors and how they are far more useful as compared to diodes. In this particular lecture, we will be able to understand the action of a transistor, we'll be able to describe the effect of doping and size on the working of the transistor and we will be able to understand various transistor parameters. To start with, a transistor is a bipolar device which means that it is a collection of three distinct regions unlike a diode where there were just two regions. The first transistors were invented by J. Bardeen, W. Breton and W. Shockley in 1948 at Bell Labs in USA. These transistors find immense applications in toys, amplifiers, space satellites, communication systems, televisions and radios. Unlike diodes which have very limited applications in rectification and detection, these transistors have immense applications because of their special arrangements. These are some of the common type of transistors available in the market. Each of the transistor is indicated by these three distinct legs. These three distinct legs assign the different regions of the transistor. In a transistor, there are three alternate regions of which the two alternate regions are identical. So a given transistor will either have two p-type regions with an n-type region in between or vice versa. The three distinct regions are called the emitter, the base and the collector. Let's understand the types of transistor. There are two distinct kinds of transistors, an NPN transistor and a PNP transistor. In an NPN transistor, you have these two N-type regions with this P-type region sandwiched in between. So the emitter and collector are of the same kind and the base is of the different kind. On the other hand, a PNP transistor means that there are emitter and collector made of the P region and the base is made of the N region. These are the two distinct symbols of the transistor. The first one is the NPN transistor. This is the emitter, this is the base, and this is the collector. This arrow indicates the conventional direction of the current flow. Conventionally, what happens is that the base is made up of p-type and it is always the positive direction of the current which is considered. So the arrow indicates from base towards the emitter in the NPN transistor. On the other hand, in the PNP transistor, the current is directed from the emitter to the base because the emitter is p-type and the base is n-type. So the arrow is simply indicating the conventional direction of the current flow. Let's now discuss the working principle of a transistor. To show this, I am drawing the transistor on the board. These are the three distinct regions of the transistor, the emitter, the base and the collector. The doping is such that the emitter is most heavily doped followed by the collector and the base is lightly doped. Now there in an open circuit there is a formation of depletion region on both sides of the junction. Both sides of the junction are devoid of charge, formation of depletion region thus takes place over here in the base collector junction 
as well as the emitter base junction. This is similar to the recombination process which we have discussed in the p-n junction diode. In the p-n junction diode, there was just one depletion region while in case of transistor, there are going to be two depletion regions because of two junctions formed over here. Since the doping of the emitter region is highest, therefore the thickness of the depletion region towards the emitter side is least. On the other hand, since the doping of the base region is least, therefore the thickness of the depletion region on both the sides is larger in the base region. Towards the collector side, again the doping is higher than the base region and therefore the thickness of the depletion region is lesser towards the collector side as compared to the base side. Now let's understand the biasing in a transistor. By the word biasing, we means how do we connect it in a circuit and provide appropriate voltage so that a transistor becomes a functional device. Let's understand the various kinds of biasings for a transistor. In general, a transistor is biased in such a way that one portion of it remains forward bias while the other portion of it remains reverse bias. For example, in this NPN transistor, the emitter base junction is forward bias and the collector base junction is reverse bias. Let's understand how the transistor works. As soon as the emitter base junction is connected in the forward bias, a large number of electrons enter into the N region and start drifting towards the P site. Since this particular region is forward bias, the junction offers minimum resistance to the flow of current and therefore the electrons move quickly from the N side to the P side. Now these electrons as they move from the N side to the P side, this P region which is very lightly doped leads to a very small fraction of electrons being recombined which means that most of the electrons simply pass through the P region. Now there are two possibilities for the electron to move from P region towards the collector side or to move from the P region back to the circuit. The electrons most of them try to pass on to the collector side and very small portion of the current tries to go towards the back circuit. Looking at the circuit, to begin with, a large amount of current flows through the circuit and the base with a very light doping does not block the current and simply allows large number of electrons to pass towards the collector side. This collector base terminal is reverse bias and therefore they do not block the flow of current and thus the large amount of current flows through the circuit. So thus the emitter current is said to be a collection of collector current and the base current. So the overall circuit runs like this unlike a diode where the reverse bias does not conduct in this particular case of transistor, the reverse bias is helping in getting a large collector current. As soon as the bias voltage that is VBE, BE represents the base emitter voltage exceeds the barrier potential, large number of free electrons from the emitter side enters to the base. The base being very thin does not block the flow of electrons and it simply passes large number of electrons towards the collector side. A small component of the base current which constitutes the downward component of the current or the recombination current flows down the circuit towards the emitter and more or less 95% of the electrons pass towards the collector side 
and the reverse bias in the collector side forces these electrons to move down the circuit and complete the flow of current. In case of the transistor, the total emitter current is equal to the base current and the collector current. Let's now understand the transistor parameters. The transistor parameters signify the current gain parameters in the transistor. Now what we observe is that in a transistor there are two parts of the circuit. One of them is called the input and the other one is called the output. So the two junctions which are in connection, for example, the emitter base part forms the input and the collector base part forms the output. Let's write that on the board to develop a better understanding. The first transistor parameter is the signal current gain. It is defined as the ratio of the collector current to the emitter current. It is denoted by the symbol alpha. Alpha is equal to IC by IE. This is known as signal current gain. Another transistor parameter which is the ratio of the collector current to the base current is represented by beta. This is the transistor parameter of the output circuit. Beta is equal to IC divided by IB. Now in a given transistor the total current IE is equal to the sum of collector current and the base current. Using this we are going to derive a relation between this alpha and beta. To begin with IE the emitter current is equal to the sum of the collector and the base current. Consider this as my equation number 1 if I divide throughout by the collector current what I get is we have taken equation 1 and divided it throughout by IC. IE by IC is nothing but the reciprocal of alpha because alpha is IC by IE. So writing this as 1 by alpha is equal to 1 plus 1 by beta. This is the reciprocal of beta because beta is IC by IE. Rearranging this expression what we get is beta is equal to alpha divided by 1 minus alpha. This is the relation between the two transistor parameters which is helpful in solving a number of problems. Usually the value of alpha is of the order of something less than 1 while beta is usually much much greater than 1. So let's now recap today's class. We have learnt about transistors which are bipolar junction devices. We discussed two different types of transistors, an NPN transistor and a PNP transistor. We have discussed in general the working principle of a transistor and the transistor parameters that is alpha and beta and the mutual relation between alpha and beta. Thank you learners.